So in this video, I am going to try to show you how to start on a beginner's budget. And you don't have to have all of this. I, this is just what I went and purchased at Walmart. You can go to the do dollar store and get some of this stuff maybe a bit cheaper, not much. Uh, I paid 88 cents for the pack of sticks. The bottle, craft bottle, and their um, apple, apple Barrel brand. Those were 50 cents a piece. I got 10 of them, so that's $5. I got a large bottle, an 8 ounce of the white. That was $2.50. The cups were about $2.60, and you can find cheaper cups than that. And they're 5 ounce cups. We had the WD 40 at the house already, and you may already have WD 40 at your house or Rainex or something. So if you have something around the house, you can use that. Uh, the bottle of glue, I got the seven ounce one. This is two and a half dollars at Walmart. A thing of push pins, which was about a buck. A straw from around the house in case I need it. The canvases, the four pack was maybe uh, $7. And I've got two longer canvases that are 7 by 14 That was maybe $5. So this was about $25 worth right here. Not including the WD-40 because we have that at home. I've got wax paper down on my stove top. And everything else uh, is just going to be mixed up. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some paints and put push pins in the bottom of my canvases and then I'll be back to show you after I've done all that and I'll mix one color with you just to show how that's done. I'll be back here shortly. So the only thing I forgot to mention is gloves. You don't have to have gloves but it does keep your hands from getting like stained with the paint. You can also get a, a dollar pack at the dollar store that has three or four sets or something like that. We had gloves out in our camper for camping and that kind of stuff so we keep gloves around anyway. So that was the only thing I didn't mention. So I've mixed up all my paints and I've got one cup left to stir up and so the pouring medium that I'm using today is a mixture of glue all, Elmer's glue all, and water and I'm using Julie Cut's recipe and it is 70% glue to 30% water. So you mix up a container of pouring medium. 70% glue, 30% water. If you have to do it by ounces to, to make it work out for you, do it that way. I can't really tell you an easy way to do that. 70% glue, 30% water. That's your pouring medium. Then for your pouring medium, you do one-to-one -one ratio paint to pouring medium except for she uses global because she's in uh, the brand is global and she's in Australia and we don't have global but it's a thicker paint so she said you might have to adjust more paint to your pouring medium ratio if you have thinner paint and I can honestly say apple barrel is very thin so you need a little bit more paint to pouring medium. Her ratio is one to one. So one part paint, one part pouring medium made from the glue and water. But I used a little more paint than I did the glue and water pouring medium because this is not a thick paint. So it was probably more like 60% paint, 40% pouring medium. But the pouring medium is made of 70% glue, 30% water. So I'm mixing up my last cup, and already it is so different from my normal recipe because I usually use Floetrol, and I use one-to-one -one ratio with paint, and it's kind of like a perfect consistency, and if I use two paints, I add water. So this, you know, because it has water in the pouring medium, recipe you definitely don't add any water and this is a very wet mixture which I don't typically work with this wet a mixture but this is what this is I have no idea if this is going to work or not and I've already sprayed WD-40 and all the other cups 
a little squirt. Gonna stir a few times, and I don't even know if a squirt of WD-40 is too much because I don't use WD-40. I don't use glue. I don't use Apple Barrel. I don't use Walmart canvases. So all of this is different, but I wanted you to see it from a perspective of just doing it on a budget. Some say from Walmart. So what I'm going to do is I've got these four six by six inch canvases, deep. They're a deep, thick one, and it says for a six by six inch canvas on the chart that you need one ounce of paint. I'm going to go with a couple of ounces just because of the deep edges. And so these are five ounce cups. I'm going to put a good two, two and a half ounces or so in each cup, but I'm going to pour them really kind of all the same way because I want you to see how different they will all turn out. I think it's a really cool experiment. So I've got kind of a rainbow of colors. I didn't have enough glue to go into the navy or teal, so I did not mix the navy and teal up. So I've got um, Concord Grape, bright blue, is here. The green is Kelly Green. The red is Flag Red. The orange is Harvest Orange. The yellow is Yellow. And the pink color is Pink Eraser. And then white and black. And the black is not as dark as the Artist Loft black that I use. And it's almost feels gritty. Like you can feel grit. It's just weird. But that's what it is. That's what we're using today. We're just playing and having fun. And I think what I'm going to do is go for a kind of rainbow order of colors. So let me line my colors up. So I'm going to do yellow, definitely yellow, orange, red, pink. I'll do the green beside the yellow, the blue. And so I'll do blue, green, yellow, orange, red, pink, and purple. And then I'm going to occasionally throw in some white and black. But I'm going to try to do them all the same so that you can see just how each one is going to end up a little bit different. So I'm going to start each cup with just a light layer. And we're talking a, less than a quarter of an inch of paint. It's just basically lining the cup at the bottom with white. This paint mixture is very wet. I have no clue if it's going to have cells or if it's going to do what it's even supposed to do. But here we go. I'm going to do blue. I'm going to try to pour about the same amounts in each one as well. And you really, all you can do is eyeball it. There is no exact science to this. Green. I'm just paying attention to where my lines are on my cup and I'm trying to stay kind of in a, about the same spot with each one where I'm pouring. And this is called a dirty pour because you're pouring one color into another so it automatically becomes what they call dirty because you're mixing those paints together. Okay, now I'm going to throw in a little bit of black. Just a, not a lot, just a little bit. See, I don't even care if I drip on my canvases because it's going to get covered anyway. It's always good to have a damp paper towel around just to wipe your hands off. Okay, now I'm going to do orange. Again, I'm trying to keep the levels of paint about the same. And I'll probably have way too much paint, than, you know, more than I need, but it's better to have too much than not enough. To 
just trying to keep them fairly level. This is always fun to experiment anyway. Even if you don't get to use the regular products you use, even if you're traveling and you want to do it wherever you're traveling at and you just want to buy something local and do it while you're local and you got a few days for it to, to dry, then do it when you're traveling. Do it in a hotel room. Do it, you know, at a relative's house. It's uh, something you can always kind of do anywhere you go. Okay, this is my last color. And again, this is so different because I'm not using my regular brands of paint or Floetrol and things like that. Okay, I think I'll throw in one more shot of black right down the middle. Just a little. And it kind of gives a neat contrast when you throw back black into the equation. Now I'm going to like just do a little circle of white around the edge of the paint. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Wipe my cups off so they're not all drippy and yucky. So I've got four dirty cups here. Turn them over really quick. I'm not really good at that, but hey, that one, I kind of missed the boat a little bit. I'm going to move the cups off of my wax paper just so I have more room to tilt and make a mess. So I'm going to center them more a little so that they're not off on the side of the oven. And then I need one push pin extra. And I noticed too that sometimes when you get these canvases, sometimes the wood is like super hard and it's almost impossible to get the pins into the wood without hammering. You don't have to put them all the way in as long as you put them at the same depth. As long as you can get your fingers underneath them to lift the canvases so that they're not sitting in a puddle of paint and they're level, they don't rock, then you're good. So, you know, you don't have to kill yourself trying to get the push pins pushed all the way in. But what this does is it releases the air in the cup and it just helps that paint flow. And here we go. We're going to release. Oh, this is so wet. I don't know. It doesn't look anything like when I use Floetrol and OGX and all that. So, totally different. And I don't have a heat source either. I do not have a heat gun. I have a blow dryer, but if I hit a blow dryer on this, it would go splashing everywhere. I'll put some fire near it, but I don't think that's going to help. I don't see any cells coming up from it. I don't want to set my paint on fire either. But that does not help. So, I don't know. It was worth a try. Hey, is anything smoking? I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt. And you can already see the paint kind of breaking down. And I think it's because the pouring medium with the glue and water was so wet. And with the, uh, the paint brand, it just was too wet. So this is n probably not a great experiment at all. But so it goes.
trying to keep the interesting part on the canvas. That's kind of hard to do too. So I'm just going to dip my fingers in so that I cover my edges. So these may get painted over and they may stay, who knows. I'm always concerned too with the glue cracking or crazy. So we'll just have to see on this one. So I can honestly say the WD-40 was not that great for cell making. And it might just be because the paint is too liquidy, wet, watery. But see, that's another thing too, is when you have your paints too fluid, the colors muddy together easier. It's better to go thicker than thinner because the thinner you go, the muddier your paints will be the more chances you will have of everything just turning to mud. So this is the one that had the black show up the most, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to show you the four canvases. Hopefully I'm showing you because I can't see the camera because it's turned around the other way. With the next one I film, I'll do it where I can see the, through the camera. With this one I cannot see. So hopefully you can see the finished canvases. But you see how there's, there's no real cell formation. It's kind of broken down. The paints are breaking apart. They're still, it's still pretty, but it's just not, not like a, a good quality thing. So Julie cuts like I said, she uses global impasto paint, which is thicker, way better quality than apple barrels. So maybe that's why she has such beautiful paintings that she has such luck with. Whereas these, I'm not real impressed with. So there they are. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I don't know where my thumb is in the camera. <laughs> and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to come back with one more video on this and I'm going to do two more canvases a little bit differently and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, bye-bye.